Hello everyone, my name is Amir and I'm a PhD student at the Max Planck Institute for Intelligent Systems in Germany. And today I am delighted to present our work titled Model Agnostic Counterfactual Explanations for Consequential Decisions. Now the story of this work is on algorithmic decision making. While in this presentation we focus primarily on the running example of bank loan approval, algorithms are used to inform decisions in a wide range of scenarios where decisions have consequential effects on individuals' lives. And therefore, societal values such as fairness, accountability, privacy, and transparency take center stage. Today's talk focuses on interpretable machine learning, and in this context, there are various stakeholders involved when an explanation is required. In the standard setup, we have researchers and developers that design models based on the data of data subjects. The resulting model is owned and then deployed by this person on top who in turn converts the people on the bottom right into decision subjects. All the while, the law tries to certify that the situation does not violate legal or ethical constraints. What makes interpretability challenging is not only the diversity in the stakeholder needs, but also that the needs may or may not be aligned and change depending on the situation. And because of this, there are many forms of explanations and interpretability methods. In a seminal work by Bachter et al, um, they suggest that an explanation of automated decisions does not necessarily hinge on the general public understanding of how algorithmic systems function. Instead, they suggest that one could gauge the scope and content of explanations according to the specific goal or action they are intended to support. And so the authors outlined three aims for explanation systems in regards to decision subjects. And these aims are as follows. Firstly, explanations should assist data subjects to understand why a particular decision was reached, to provide grounds to contest or argue against adverse decisions, and to understand what could be changed to receive a desired result in the future. And they propose that all of these aims can be satisfied using what are known as counterfactual explanations. So from the perspective of the individual, we propose MACE, which is a novel approach for generating nearest counterfactual explanation based on the approach of formal verification, leading to a model agnostic, distance agnostic, data type agnostic approach that can answer the questions above with optimality guarantees for any and all individuals. Throughout these slides, hopefully we'll be able to convey what each of these means and why this is important. Now, we visually depict counterfactual explanations using this figure, where H theta is a fixed classifier that's used by the bank, Edward is a factual instance whose loan was rejected, and he seeks to get the loan to land on the other side of the decision boundary. A counterfactual explanation is a statement that is similar to the one that we see here. It says you were denied a loan because your annual income was 30,000 euros. If it had been 45,000 euros, you would have been offered the loan. Now, computing the nearest counterfactual explanations become relevant, as this may correspond to the minimal effort expended by the individual according to a predefined similarity metric to get the desired output. Identifying the nearest counterfactual explanation can therefore be formulated as this optimization problem here, which we can see is an argument over the space of x's subject to the predefined sim dissimilarity metric, where the constraints are that we should first of all, get the desired output or change it with respect to what it is now, which is an undesired prediction. And we additionally have some constraints such as plausibility that um, may require maybe individual specific or context specific, such as a certain minimum age is expected of people with college degrees. Additionally, we may have more constraints such as diversity constraints. Uh, which present users with not just one, but multiple ways of achieving the desired output. Now, since its introduction in 2017, a number of works have aimed to solve the optimization problem for various settings and to various degrees of success. However, at their core, existing approaches are still optimization-based and hence inherit the limitations of optimization approaches. Specifically, they are limited in their choice of function class or H theta, the, the distance or dissimilarity metric is typically required to be differentiable or convex. And most importantly, they lack optimality guarantees due to the approximate nature of optimization. 
Also, when we're dealing with real world data, typically we have mixed data types, which are not just numerical, but they could be a mix of numerical and categorical and ordinal, such as age, gender, bank balance, uh, which is common in our running example. And existing approaches uh, have a difficult time of dealing with this. So in this work, we take a completely different approach with MACE, and we convert the entire optimization formulation into a logic formula representing the objective and the constraints. And we verify the existence of and identify a counterfactual explanation by calling an off-the-shelf SMT or satisfiability modulo theory solver on this joint formula representing the optimization problem. This allows us to identify a counterfactual explanation and then we can identify a nearest counterfactual explanation via repeated calls of uh, this diagram here, which we'll see in a couple of slides in detail. So to understand intuitively why this works, we know that all of our models and classifiers are written in um, a, a language such as Python. And Python is executed on computers, and computers can under understand and verify logic. Thus, the entire attempt here is to sol solve the equivalent formulation of an optimization problem as a logic verification problem. So first we have to understand how to represent our problem using logic. For this, we review first order logic. So in logic, we have many symbols among which function symbols and predicate symbols are two uh, central types. Function symbols allow us to write expressions and predicate symbols allow us to write atomic formulae. Now, a Boolean combination of expressions and atomic formulae make up what are known as a quantifier-free formula. An example is written on the second line here. This formula is satisfiable if there exists a solution that satisfies all of the atomic formulae. In this case, if x were 2 and y were 1, this would satisfy each of the individual atomic formulae, and hence the formula as a whole is satisfiable. And satisfiability can be verified using off-the-shelf SMT solvers in this case, we use um, the open source Z3 implementation. But how do we relate this to our problem formulation on the previous slide? We would first need to find a way to write the optimization problem as a joint formula. And to do this, we need to borrow some more concepts from programming languages and formal verification. Specifically, we talk about programs, static, single assignment form, path formulae, and the characteristic formula. So assume that we have a model F that goes from some space X to an in, in our setting, a binary output. A program is a collection of variables, constants, functions, symbols, assignments, etc., just like you would write any Python program. SSA form is an intermediary representation of a program where every non input formula, every non input variable is defined before being used and assigned at most once during execution. A path formula is a possible execution of the program starting from x and yielding y. And the characteristic formula is the disjunction of all path formulae in the program. So it's basically a uh, disjunction of any input-output pairs. And importantly, um, we can see that if for a given x, f of x is equal to y, then the characteristic formula of the function f with input arguments x and y is valid. And the validity of this can be verified using the off-the-shelf SMT solvers. So, to gain some better intuition here, uh, and for ease of exposition, we illustrate the construction of a characteristic formula through the example of a decision tree. So in this case, our f goes from a uh, three-dimensional input space to a binary output. In figure 2a, we can see the decision tree. Figure 2b provides a programming language description of this decision tree. In this case, it's already in SSA form. And to construct a characteristic formula representing the function f of x is equal to y computed by this tree, we first build a clause for each leaf in the tree by taking the conjunction of all the conditions encountered in the path from the root to the leaf. And then the characteristic formula corresponding to the full tree is obtained by taking the disjunction of all set clauses. And again, just to remind, uh, for this function f, and given input x, if f of x is equal to y, then the characteristic formula of f, given inputs x and y as arguments, is valid and verifiable. 
So now we have the characteristic formula of the model, but how do we get the counterfactual formula? This is what we need as equivalent to the optimization problem. So we define the set of counterfactuals um, as this set here, the set of all x's, such that the prediction differs from the factual instance. The counterfactual formula is simply the characteristic formula where the desired label is an argument. In the binary case, we want to find the x's such that the characteristic formula of f with inputs x and 1 minus y hat is valid. Given this counterfactual formula, if we call an SAT oracle on it, this would return us a counterfactual explanation. But how do we get the nearest counterfactual explanation? So for now, we assume a notion of distance and dissimilarity between instances d is given. And for convenience and without loss of generality, we can assume that d takes values in the interval of 0 and 1. Therefore, we can derive a formula for a distance-restricted counterfactual, as we can see here. And as before, passing this joint formula into an SAT oracle will give us a sample that in this case is not only just the counterfactual, but it satisfies the distance constraint. So to obtain the nearest counterfactual explanation, our optimization-based problem formulation was alternatively formulated as a satisfiability problem over the equivalent joint formula. We can iteratively call the SAT core oracle on the above while reducing distance, um, as we can see in the algorithm on the right, which allows us to achieve arbitrary accuracy and providing distance optimality guarantees. So we compare our approach mace against the aforementioned methods in the literature. And for each combination of approach, uh, model, data set, and distance, we generate the nearest counterfactual explanations for a held out set of 500 instances classified as negative by the corresponding model. As for the metrics, the distance and coverage criteria were used, where coverage indicates the percentage of factual samples or individuals that were denied alone, for which our approach, or any approach that we compare with, generates plausible counterfactuals. First, we look at coverage, specifically data type and data range plausibility. And in this table, we have omitted both MACE and the minimum observable method, and because by definition and by design, they have 100% coverage. In contrast, however, existing approaches such as feature tweaking and actionable recourse fail to generate plausible counterfactuals for a significant portion of instances. And this experiment showcases the failure of existing approaches in handling heterogeneous data. After arriving at a set of plausible counterfactual explanations for the same factual samples, we are able to compute the relative distance reductions achieved when using MACE, which we said was optimal, as compared to other approaches. And this is shown in Table 3. We observe that MACE results in significantly closer counterfactual explanations and competing approaches, with an average decrease in distance of 70% for adult, 75% for the credit dataset, and 20% for the compass datasets. And this concludes that counterfactuals generated by MACE would require significantly less effort on behalf of the affected individual in order to achieve the desired prediction or achieve recourse. Next, we qualitatively analyze the generated counterfactuals to ensure that they are meaningful. We observe that many of the counterfactuals require changes in features that are often protected by law, such as age, race, and gender, and this is not acceptable. As an example for a trained random forest model, the unconstrained counterfactuals generated by both MACE and MO approaches required individuals to change their age. And worse yet, for a substantial portion of these counterfactuals, a reduction in age was required, which is not even possible. So to demonstrate that we can handle additional plausibility constraints, we added the constraint of non-decreasing age, and we observed a distance increase for both methods, um, but significantly more for MO than MACE. And this suggests that counterfactual explanations found with MACE may assist in qualitatively ascertaining other desiderata, such as fairness. Finally, we present a situation where MACE can be used to generate counterfactuals under both plausibility and diversity constraints. In this case, we consider a loan borrower from the credit data set identified with the following features. John is a married male between the age of 40 and 59, and he has some university degree, which is unclear. 
Financially, over the last six months, John has been struggling to make payments on his bank loan. So given his circumstances, um, and assuming that a logistic regression model was trained on the historical data set and is used by the bank to predict that John will default on his loan uh, in the next months, to prevent this default, the bank uses MACE to generate diverse suggestions that we see here in Table 5. Diverse suggestions are generated via successive runs of our presented algorithm, where each new run augments the constraints formula with an additional diversity clause, in this case enforcing L0 diversity, to restrict repetitive counterfactuals by enforcing subsequent recommendations to have a zero-norm distance of at least one from all previous counterfactuals. Now, what we see in this table uh, in the returned counterfactuals, of which only three are shown, is that the bank can present John with diverse courses of action. In the first line, we can see that the bank suggests that John can continue spending the same as before, but make a large payment to account for continued expenditures. In the second line, he can either reduce spending and make a lump sum payment on the debt, which is less than the first one. Alternatively, if John were to provide uh, some additional documents regarding his university degrees, for example, if he had a graduate degree, this would put him in a low risk bracket according to the model used by the bank, and so he would be saved from some headaches. In conclusion, we presented a novel approach for generating counterfactual explanations in the context of consequential decisions. Our approach was model agnostic, data type agnostic, and norm agnostic, and it came with provable closeness guarantees uh, and worked with 100% coverage for any individual, even under plausibility and diversity constraints. As extensions of this work, we revisit an initial motivation of counterfactual explanations presented by Bachler et al., which suggested that explanations should be a means to help a data subject act rather than merely understand. And so in follow-up work, we argue that this is not possible without considering the effect of actions performed in the real world. If we are to recommend actions that are being performed, we should be able to accordingly model the consequences of those actions in the real world. And for this, we would need an understanding of the causal structure and relation between the variables that govern the world. For the interested reader, we recommend um, reading our follow-up work on these topics. Ultimately, the adoption of machine learning models relies on the trust developed between humans and machines, and interpretable machine learning and counterfactual explanations are one step towards that. Thank you very much.